It's time once again for another episode of Georgia Business Radio. Broadcasting live from the Pro Business Channel studios in Atlanta. And now here's your host, Rich Casanova. All right, we're in for a good one here today. We have uh, two subject matter experts. These guys are world-renowned geniuses. We're going to find out uh, at what. We don't know, but we're going to find out, all right? So you're listening to Georgia Business Radio with your host, uh, Rich Casanova. We're in what we're calling now Studio One, uh, which is in Buckhead, and we have our Studio Two now up the road. We're like Starbucks on every corner. Uh, stand by for those announcements. Right now, um, in our second segment, we're going to be bringing uh, on the on the show is Mark Riley. He's from Club Corp, uh, which is many people are somewhat familiar with your brand. I often say it's like the um, country club without the golf course, right? In terms of the city experience, right? For networking and right. Absolutely, Rich. You're right. Uh, club Corp owns and manages over 200 clubs throughout the country. Here in Atlanta, we have about 30 clubs. And the majority of those clubs are the traditional country clubs with tennis and golf yeah, and right. swimming. But they also have a great variety of uh, spaces for events and uh, private events. We welcome the outside public to come to Club Corp and have their weddings, their anniversary parties. You know, you name the type of event, we can put it on golf the, tournaments, and etc. cetera. Uh, and, so and you, you guys will make that happen, yeah. Absolutely. So we're going to be um, – uh, so what's, what's your teaser or your elevator pitch before we come back to you in our second segment? What's the best way? The, you... the, the best way I can do, describe what I do is I give businesses the opportunity to engage with my members, this upscale, affluent lifestyle demographic that's here in Dallas uh, – excuse me, the head, <laughs> our headquarters is Dallas in Atlanta. Yeah, uh, or wherever, the, you, wherever you guys yeah, find yeah, you guys. wherever we have a club. Okay, uh, perfect. You know, playing golf and tennis and so forth, and they're a great target for a lot of different marketing companies. Awesome. So stand by for that conversation in just a minute. But uh, first up, we have Eugene Pope uh, with Sandler Training in the studio. And uh, Eugene, we met uh, a n- quite a while back. Yeah. We've had a lot of conversation about having you in the studio, so you finally arrived. Yeah, okay. I think since July. <laughs> right? Yeah. I know. It's crazy, right? Yeah. And then we uh, also reconnected at our second studio up the road at Serendipity. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of cool. So our, our paths were meant to uh, connect here. <laughs> Speaking of what, we just attended your event uh, directly, literally across the street, the uh, buyer-seller dance. Yes. Yeah, thank so, you for coming. Yeah, absolutely. It was, it was really enjoyable. I got a whole uh, two pages of notes, at least, to uh, dive into here. But before we do that, tell us a little bit of your backstory, You know where you're from, uh, 17 seconds or less, the Eugene Pope's life story. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've moved around quite a bit of places. So I've, I've lived in uh, California, originally born in California, okay. lived in Texas, lived in uh, Oklahoma, lived in Washington State, Florida, uh, Michigan. I've moved to Georgia three times, so I'm a native of Georgia since I've been here three times. <laughs> wow. So. And my background is I came out of uh, field management retail, worked for a lot of uh, large corporations uh, such as Best Buy, Godiva, Sunglass Hut, and, and many more like that. Yeah. I was basically a field manager. And the part that I did or that I, I love most about what I did before was the whole leadership and facilitating and teaching yeah. and training. So that's what got me into what I'm doing now. Man, you—I uh, thought I had it, but you got that radio voice. I didn't—I didn't hear it during the <laughs> seminar over there. Yeah, <laughs> digitally enhanced. Yeah, yeah. nice, yeah. exactly. Yeah, uh, we need to hire you in the studio oh, here. Brought yeah. my own audio guy. He's <laughs> yeah, out. Apparently, back. Yeah. yeah. Dang. Uh, can we switch microphones? Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, um, and now fast forward to today. So you've uh, you launched uh, your own Sandler Training Center yeah. here in Buckhead in the uh, District of Atlanta. Yep. You're working with uh, professionals to grow their sales through the Sandler Sales Training Methodology, right? Um, and so, speaking of that, so some take away some nuggets from today's event so this was really cool you had a, a packed room here mm-hmm. and you talked about the traditional uh buyer seller yeah kind right. of what's been done in the past and you said you you taught that for a number of years right i did i did if you've been in and around atlanta since and i'm going to date myself here since 91 uh, there are possibly thousands of people that i have taught traditional sales right. thinking i was doing a great job yeah. and thinking i was really helping people when really all i was doing was teaching a model that is simple that everybody does that it's just kind of like a shotgun approach right it's a numbers game it can work but as yeah. they say and it has build worked. a better mousetrap there's a better exactly. way more exactly. efficient exactly right because if you look at the buyer seller dance the it's it's based on or if you look at traditional sales it's based on a lack of trust the salesperson the seller is trying to give you abc good better best right uh, mm-hmm. and the buyer is trying to avoid you basically taking advantage of them so they're going to not tell you the truth not be upfront with you and you're you're dancing back and forth right. trying to get to the end sale and you had a lot of great acronyms and uh, takeaways here so uh um so run through as quick as you can this process of disarming disarmingly yes. honest right yes. 
Yeah. And, and it's interesting, uh, Michael Moore, who's also in the studio, we were sitting on in your seminar, and we were passing notes back and forth because we had that 10 o'clock meeting before we yeah. headed to your event. Yeah. And unknowingly, we had kind of rolled through these. We had a meeting. We just said right up front, here's what's going on. We had the agenda written on our whiteboard. Right? Pick up yeah. from there, right? Well, um, first off, uh, I noticed you two passing notes, and I almost was going to separate <laughs> I know, right? you. That, that, that's I, know. I did feel yeah, like a yeah, flashback yeah. to yeah. high school or something. Yeah, yeah grade so, school. <laughs> well, uh, to cut, here's kind of the uh, the, the whole um, Sandler methodology, okay. if you will. And it's seven steps. It is, as you mentioned first, starts off with being disarmingly honest. Right. Because you have to repair that lack of trust that has happened over decades through traditional sales. And to do that, you've got to have some good bonding rapport with the, your prospect, or whomever you're sitting in front of. And being honest is the best way to build that bonding And kind rapport. of acknowledge that, right? Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Okay. And right up front, if they ask you a question, be honest. Yeah. Don't try to dance around it. Uh, don't try to come up with some kind of answer that you think the prospect is going to like. Just be honest. And you'll be surprised that the prospect is it's refreshing when you tell them the truth. Because people understand and intuitively when you're not truthful with them. And that goes right into that whole traditional uh, process where they're not going to trust you. Yeah, I used to say jokingly, um, it's important to be ethical in business whenever appropriate. Right? Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> but, um, and, and then you roll through, um, uh, you appreciate their time, which is interesting. Yeah. That exactly the meeting we had, we opened with, we appreciate your time yeah. here in the studio. Um, people like to hear that. That just kind of sets the right yeah. tone, right? Well, it sets the agenda. Yeah. And that's the key is that the prospect knows what to expect and you know what to expect and they know what the outcome is going to look like and what the expectation is. So you set the agenda up front and, and that, again, it just opens up that line of communication between you and your prospect because that's what it all is. It's all about communication. And speaking of communication, I'd like to follow up to that. Then you follow with, correct me if I'm wrong, by saying, um, naturally, you're going to have questions. Mm-hmm. I'll have questions. And yes. typically, we'll overcome that with a yes or no yeah and i like how you took maybe off the table right yeah what i'll do and i'll give a little bit of my my candy here as we talked about in the class is (laughs) uh it's called a not ask uh you know you appreciate the uh the meeting right naturally i'm gonna have some questions for you obviously you're gonna have some questions for me and typically at the end of this the three answers are yes no and maybe I'll define what the no means, and I'll tell the prospect that, hey, I may say no, right. and it's okay for them to say no. Yeah. That's crucial. And then I'll define what yes looks like, and then I'll address the maybe or what we hear a lot of, the think it overs. And I'll say, you know, the other answer maybe or the other outcome may be a maybe, and to be honest with you, maybe it's just a nice way of you saying no, so yeah. I don't expect ma- accept maybes. Just right. say no. Yeah. And um, I think that kind of throws people off in a good way. It does. It does. Right? Yeah. But it, it's, it also, it makes people feel very comfortable. Yeah. It really kind of sets the tone because most traditional sales, the prospect thinks that the salesperson is just in it for them. Right. They're not there to really help the prospect. And as we talked about in the in the second um, segment, it was nice how everybody got to a chance uh, in your event to kind of share their their yeah. business story. And uh, w- w- you know, we announced a, a number of initiatives that we're launching. And um, although we're excited about, it, we think it has great traction. But one of the takeaways I had from your uh, seminar was about asking the kind of um, the yeah. obvious question, yeah. which is, what true problem do we think we're uh, solving for them? But more yeah. importantly. Is this something that's going to solve a real problem for you? Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. Sandler rule is the problem the prospects bring you is never the real problem. Okay. So what you need to do is employ strategic questionings to kind of uncover what those real problems are. Right. Uh, for example, um, <clears throat> let's say you're talking with somebody and their sales are 20% down, and they're telling you that's the what the problem is, right. or what we call the pain. Right. When really, that's just the surface. Underneath, it could be uh, something within their organization that's causing the sales to be down 20%, such as they may not have a consistent selling approach. And let's say you got a salespeople or a sales team of six people, right. each one's doing something different. One may, do, may be doing phenomenal, right. whereas one may really be struggling because they have no consistency in their process. And, and the big uh, question that created a lot of buzz was this, this topic, which is the next uh, rolls right into, is the budget. Yeah. Because uh, I think if you've ever sold anything to anybody or even bought anything on either side of the table, that, que- that question uh, or objection or what do you want to call it comes up yeah. is that we just don't have the budget for it, right? Yeah. And my take, my aha moment was um, now moving forward, I think we, I said during the seminar that I would ask them, is budget really the issue or is that a way of saying yeah. no? Yeah. Because I'm yeah. okay with a no. Yeah, and that, that's called a reverse. Put yeah. it right back on them. It's like if they, if they come to you and say, well, I don't really have the money. Well, is this a no? Are we yeah. done here? Right. <laughs> and it'll, it'll get the conversation going. Yeah. But another, another thing to that, too, is um, when I was in traditional selling, and I taught this, like I right. said, 
tons of right, people, right. tons of people. <laughs> you could have written the book on it, right? I, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I actually I read an article years and years ago that there were, um, out of all the salespeople out there, only 5% were good at closing or asking for a sale. Think about that. That means 95% were not good at asking for a sale. So I took that information in my old world and I started teaching my people, ask for the sale. Something as simple as that. You know what happened? Nothing. It didn't improve the results at all. So I had people there that were getting really good at saying, hey, you want to go ahead and get that today? Or, hey, uh, let's let's go ahead and close this up, yeah. asking for the sale. And what I figured out now, looking at how Sandler does it, what we do in our program through our classes is, you know, that 95% may have had it right. You don't want to ask for the sale. You want the prospect to give up the sale. And it could be something as simple as, as you're talking about, a, you've gone through budget, you've gone through pain, is you ask the prospect, well, what do you want to do next? What's the next step? Yeah. And they'll tell you. We'll say, well, let's talk more about this. Okay. You talk more about that. Well, what do you want to do next? Then they may tell you, well, let's go ahead and wrap this up. Right. Let them ask for the sale. Yeah. But, you know, I, when you were saying ask for the sale, I think I've been guilty about that. Yeah. I gave a great presentation. I, that was awesome, you yeah. know? And then I don't actually ask for the business. Sometimes you yeah. have to, you need to do that as well, right? That balance, well, right? We're, we're uncomfortable asking for money. Yeah. That's what it all comes down to. Society has taught us through, you know, our parents not talking about money in the household or whatnot. Society has taught us don't ask about money. That's that uncomfortable right, yeah, yeah. time. Speaking of money, one of the things that uh, was um, reiterated throughout the, the the program today was this idea. Talk to us about free consultation, which yes. I, I was thinking on the way over because because uh, Mark sat in on the on the event as well, and I'm thinking we don't normally charge our guests for the show, so maybe <laughs> we start start charging you guys. Yeah, so we'll get, we'll get the swiper out in yeah. a minute here. Maybe the but, next guest. Yeah, the next nice. Show. But talk to us about uh, business owners were guilty about uh, giving free consultation. Yeah. Now the beauty of this is uh, what I'm telling you and what you. Saw today you can get on youtube you can get online you can go yeah. see this stuff so it's out there the free consultation pieces we talk about giving away or spilling your candy in the lobby is right. the phrase that we use <laughs> and basically you go in there and I, I i use the example of construction companies you hear this a lot when i talk to a lot of uh, people out in the construction industry right. is they'll go into a household and the let's say it's a kitchen remodel and they'll do this big proposal they'll write it up they'll go back to their office they'll spend hours on it go back to the prospect give it to the prospect and the prospect will take that and use it to go shop it somewhere else so they just gave them some free consulting they just gave them a bunch of information what the job looks like the material cost the time involved so now that prospect can use that going to shop it around to other people right. so they just gave a bunch of free information right, and they right. got nothing out of it yeah that's a no then yeah. that's not a good idea that's yeah. what you're saying yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. you, you want to really you, you know there's sometimes where you you're going to give a little bit but in most cases what you really want to do is you want to keep asking questions so you can uncover what right. the issues are that the prospects have so you can help solve those issues yeah find their pain and then find uh, the fix pain. it yeah find the pain all right um so eugene this is great conversation for uh, actually for business audience right uh so we're gonna um and our come back and deep dive into talk about behavior attitude mm -hmm. and your technique yeah. but we're gonna bring uh, mark in on the conversation conversation as well before i do that so good note taking to what i was listening at very good right? very good very good i, I you, you'll give me your credit card later for that information <laughs> oh dang <Yeah. laughs> see turning the tables <laughs> on me right away yeah this guy's good yeah okay so eugene hold tight for a second but beforehand how would folks uh reach out to you um and um you know yep. connect with you yeah well you can look up eugene pope uh and you'll see me on LinkedIn, Eugene Pope. Uh, if you want to look at Sandler Training Buckhead, you'll find me all over the place just by dialing in or Googling Sandler Training Buckhead. My Facebook page is Sandler Training Buckhead. Twitter is uh, Sandler Training Buckhead. You can find me um, on LinkedIn, Eugene Pope. Or you can uh, email me at uh, eugenepope.sandler.com. And no relation, right? No. <laughs> Never heard that one before, right? <laughs> all the, no, not at all. First not, time. not recently. Yeah. First clever. time today. Very yeah. clever. <laughs> okay, here we go. Okay, so uh, we we're talking earlier with Mark Riley's uh, joining us back now. We're going to talk about um, Club Corp, and as we mentioned, um, two hundred some odd locations around the world, around the country, right? Correct. Uh, Twenty three thousand members. Uh, two hundred twenty. Two hundred twenty thousand. Uh, throughout the country, and here in Atlanta, right. we have 23,000. Wow. Uh, and that encompasses 30 different clubs. That's awesome. Uh, I've been to a number of them, and like we said beforehand, uh, when, when, when in a business environment, I know that you have the country club pieces and the tennis and the, uh, and the golf and so forth, but what I like when I visit between the events, uh, we attend the networking functions and so forth in terms of business events, it really is, you feel like you're, I, I used to work at a country club out in California as, when mm -hmm. I was in college, right? And it's a it's a very different dynamic. I mean, how do you um, what's so valuable about business happening at at that type of environment? 
Well, I think that um, if you look at the, the total footprint of Club Corp, we really allow, and it's sort of our mission statement to defining you know, what we do, we really uh, drive, our business is selling membership. Okay. And membership gives those those types of people access to, uh, obviously, the golf, the tennis, the swimming, the dining. Uh, in the city environment, it gives them interaction with like-minded people uh, to be able to you know, develop business opportunities uh, and, and at the same time have the benefits of fine dining, uh, you know, great amenities. Uh, you can have separate meetings right in our club. Uh, you can also have a private uh, room for yourself just to do work. And many of our members come to our clubs just to do their work. They yeah. could be a, you know, a realtor, an right. investment person, and they just want to have get away from the office or they're in between appointments and they can use our clubs in that regard as well. Right. And um, sometimes it's too noisy at that place that rhymes with Starbucks, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Especially right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and, and right out their window, we have uh, the probably the closest one is the Buckhead Club, right? That is which correct. Which is a spectacular view of uh, a Buckhead, a great bar, and it is. Um, I mean, a lot of business can happen on the golf course, but sometimes you don't have time to eighteen holes, right? <laughs> exactly. Know? Exactly. Right. And you know, my particular role. Uh, isn't at the clubs directly or in an operational role. That's right, yeah. I do the marketing, and we, we call it partner marketing. And basically, um, I have this great audience that uh, if you're, you know, even somebody like Eugene that's going after business owners and uh, corporate people, you know, those types of people are the people that are members at Club Corp. Uh, an investment guy, definitely, uh, a realtor. And I have multiple channels that allow uh, you as a business owner access or you know to our audience you know it could be email marketing it could be print advertising uh, events that we put on and so forth so it is a unique uh, position that you're um, you have all those resources and the access to those members that are members of these uh, the clubs right correct but it's really um, for business owners the ability to kind of connect and network with them and advertising. Uh, before we do that, t- you know, rewind for a second. Tell me uh, your backstory before you, uh, you know, with Club Corps. What have you done in the sure, past? Sure, sure, absolutely. I'm originally from the Northeast, from uh, the Boston area. Uh, grew up in Connecticut. I did take a year abroad as an exchange student oh, really? in France, which was uh, very exciting and, yeah. a, gr- and a great uh, cultural opportunity to see how another culture right. lives and I did become fluent in French which uh, if I fast forward my career uh, got me a great job with a company that was at the time uh, a division of Dun & Bradstreet called Official Airline Guides OA- oh, wow. OAG and this may date a lot of the listeners but uh, I'm sure there's a few out there that <laughs> use the OAG publications <laughs> right. to choose their flights <laughs> and uh, I traveled uh, exclusively in Europe and Africa Wow! So it was a, and I lived in London for a couple of years doing that job so uh, very well traveled. Yeah, uh, you're even like though the, it's on business, you're like the Dosecki's man today. Yeah, or whatever, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. And uh, when I, came I feel back, like a slacker listening to that or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And I <laughs> also, awesome. I also worked. Uh, you know, not only with airlines. Uh, OAG published uh, a directory in the hotel industry, so I, I have uh, a lot of experience in the hotel industry, and actually have stayed. At the JW oh, Marriott well, yeah. before, <laughs> where we had uh, the- <laughs> back in the early nineties. <laughs> well, uh, so I'm dating myself again. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah, um, it's okay to. It's great to have that history, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. Absolutely. So now back to your current role, which has kind of come a little bit full circle, or ties into your previous career positions. Right. So um, I didn't know this was really an opportunity for business people, right? We're familiar with the brand, sure, but I didn't know the avenues of advertising. So do a little deep dive into that. You kind of hit the surface level. But what are some um, – rattle out like uh, three or four of these and what they would look like and why people engage with advertising. Sure. Right? I think the most important thing um, is when you look at you know, your advertising, you have to be able to deliver your message to the right audience. Right. And if the audience is – needs to be, you know, if you're a Mercedes-Benz dealer, right. it, let's say in Buckhead or right. in Alpharetta, you, you need to find people that can afford your cars. Right. And I have that audience. I have wow. a, I have a, a upscale affluent audience. If you're a jeweler, you, you know, right. uh, jewelry is expensive. People, right. you know, have to have the, the income to afford it. So it's really, it's not actually rocket science. It's pretty yeah. straightforward, but it's knowing where you need to go as a business owner. You know, if I'm a restaurant and I just opened, if I don't build a customer base 
in six months, I'm going to be out of business. Right, yeah. Okay? i got to get <laughs> people to come in the door and try my food and, and then tell other people so I can build up that momentum. And the only way you can do that is through, you know, marketing and advertising and get people to come in the door. And so can you segment this um, based on the locale and so forth? Oh, absolutely. Right? Um, you know, each club is unto itself, so I have – programs at the club level. I have a video board program that would allow you as a business owner just to promote to the members of that particular club. And then I can elevate that to groups of clubs, or I can also do the whole Atlanta market. And one of the really neat things, we have a publication that comes out quarterly, and that goes to not only all the members of Club Corp, but also uh, extra, you know, distribution. So we get about over 500,000 uh, distribution on our club's magazine. I can actually segment uh, just an ad that would run in Atlanta versus the whole country. So there's opportunities to target, you know, geographically with uh, our programs. So you mentioned uh, a digital a billboard, if you will, or the video uh, right. on site. So uh, for a fee, could you pipe in our podcast to all these clubs or whatever, right? <laughs> we could certainly let them know about it. We could yeah. promote it. What yeah. I would probably say the better way to, to promote is to s- use our e-newsletter program, which is a group of emails that go to our members, and we'd pre-promote links to yeah, get yeah. them to come and listen. And I think yeah. that – and maybe we do a – Potentially an, an event around at one of the clubs for that someday too. Well, I mean, uh, we'll talk off the air. Yeah, but that could. But, I, but I'm thinking you get my juices uh, flowing yeah. here because I'm thinking um, for Club Core we could do uh, like a live podcast. We do a, yeah. um, a on-site broadcast. We've been to Vegas twice, DC. You know, obviously throughout yeah. Atlanta we did Leadercast, seven thousand people at Leadercast. So yeah. we do a pop-up studio or you know yeah. li- live remote broadcast. We could talk about that. But um, and for their members. But so help me if this is um, if I'm checking all the boxes. So events. So when coming up, um, at least at least seasonal, right? So right. spring, you can do a golf experience. Yeah, uh, upcoming in April, we have a series in about six of our clubs throughout the country, and it's called Golf Market Days. Okay, and all the national golf uh, marketing companies will come with their newest equipment to the club on the practice tee, and our members would engage with them there. You yeah, know, to see the new drivers. That's got to be a win-win. Yeah, all that stuff, and so you can think of the potential of oh, yeah. the types of businesses that could be, you know, there, you know, in the near the range and, and engage with our members. You know, when they finish, you know, practicing and so forth. And uh, and then the other seasonal would be a uh, ski trip or whatever. What, what's the other <laughs> opposite to the spring event? Yeah, the, the fall program we actually call Night of Luxury. Okay. And that, uh, we wrapped that up uh, in late October. It started in late August. And basically what we do there is uh, we pick a club in uh, the major cities that we're in. Right. And we invite all of our members from all the clubs in that market. So it's typically about a 400-member wow. uh, attendance. Okay. And we have great food there, great drinks, and it's a chef's competition. And I think you were saying, <clears throat> Eugene's event, you were talking about this, is that um, so a business could kind of present – uh, at one of these events, right? right? Or be a, you're we, looking there, for speakers spon- occasionally? There are spots? sponsors. Sponsors yeah. open, right? So, yeah, we have spo- at the Night of Luxury, it's sponsors. And, and whenever you, people are drinking, their wallet's a little bit looser. Yes or I yes mean, from a sales perspective? Absolutely. Right? Their, uh, their <laughs> child comes out and spends <laughs> some money. Nice. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. So, you know, recently here in uh, Atlanta, we had uh, a local Cadillac dealership, Heritage Cadillac. Right. Uh, and they were there, and we had uh, a limo company and uh, had an art gallery from Alpharetta that wow. literally put together a mini gallery, which was really neat. So it was a lot of fun and, uh, and, and you know, so- great engagement with you know the members. The members love it because they get to see these businesses sure, firsthand. They fun. get to talk to the owner yeah. of a business, yeah. you know, and, and potentially, hopefully, the goal is that that business will you know get and, some incremental business. And sometimes, Eugene, you may or may not agree with this, but sometimes it. I think you probably will from the conversation we had uh, earlier this morning. A lot of times, it's hard to get in front of the, the uh, past those gatekeepers to these influential, successful, mm-hmm. high net worth individuals, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So right? it's a great avenue. Though, yeah, yeah. Walked yeah. I saw you yeah. guys talking in the lobby, maybe yeah. closing yeah. a deal as well. Right? <laughs> Right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so just a couple more minutes. We're sure. going to open it up to an open panel discussion to wrap up the show here. So uh, the events, uh, you can do print through their uh, uh, their our publication, me- right. then their web, right? We do not directly on our web, the uh, e-newsletter. Okay, and then so we, have an, we have an email exclusive. That's a one-to-one email. Okay. And that is very, very successful for us because to try to get a spot to book 
an exclusive email is about 90 to 120 days out. Oh, well, yeah. So the cruise lines love that that vehicle. And I don't want to put you on the spot. You <laughs> sure. can say no to this like we were talking earlier, right? But uh, is there any ballpark like an entry-level price point to the highest package you can sell or whatever? Or, uh... Uh, you know, that's a great question, Rich. There certainly is. I mean, the video board program that I have at the clubs, it's 250 250 okay. per month per club. Wow. So it's a very, you know, yeah, reasonable. Very good reasonable. Entry point, yeah. Now, the, that e news, uh, the exclusive email, yeah. that can be pretty pricey. Yeah, yeah. But you're reaching the S- whole. And subject to change, yeah. <laughs> you're reaching the whole <laughs> wow, you know, membership base, which is, you know, 225,000 people. I mean, if you have an online an exclusive, business, exclusive I mean, that could be magic, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, think and of you're the, really. And the open rate for our email is typically around 38 to 40%. So that's, huge. that's a huge number. Well, good. because they're a community and they're right. they ex- anticipating that, the updates yeah. and all that good stuff. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so Mark, how would folks uh, find you, um, reach out to you, connect with you? I'm certainly uh, reachable on LinkedIn. It's uh, I use my middle initial, which is W, so it would be Mark W. Riley, and it's Riley, just like the life of Riley, R-I-L-E-Y. I'm also on Facebook, although I don't really promote my uh, business activities yeah. on Facebook. So that, Best on LinkedIn. Yeah. yeah. We do have a Club Corp uh, video Facebook page, which, you, which would go over our video program that I okay. do at the clubs. Oh, okay. So that would be searchable on Facebook, uh, Club Corp video. My email address uh, is very easy. It's mark.riley. And Mark is with a K, and then R I L E Y. Well, dot R I L E Y, and then it's at Club Corp, which is one word: C L U B C O R P. dot com. Awesome. Well yeah. said. Uh, we'll get your Social Security and your credit card a little bit later. Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so. Um, the additional thought to that would be if uh, Eugene and I buy into the program, are you going to treat us to steak dinners for the year, or how does that work? Yeah, we could figure. We'd probably work on that. <laughs> some that's drinks that. or some yeah. bourbon or something. Yeah, I think that's a TIO. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> is that a TIO there? <laughs> right. Okay, so um, so guys, we got a couple minutes here, maybe just to open a conversation. Uh, Mark, I don't know if you had some thoughts or um, questions or follow up uh, with Eugene and, and his uh, conversation at the event. You know, I think the biggest uh, takeaway I had was that what I sell is very transactional. I mean, someone either understands they have to promote their business and market, whereas I think some of the things we were touching on is maybe at a bigger scale with a, you know, someone's trying to do, you know, process improvement in their company for, you know, quality management, and they need consulting expertise. That's a more, you know, intense conversation to learn about that that opportunity. But the, the takeaway for me was I can do a better job of deciding if someone's just, Wasting my time or ready to do business yeah, with, me his, too, me with too. his product. And to me, that's as a salesperson, like at the end of the day, I'm a salesperson. Yeah. That's a great takeaway for me. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, but uh, actually, Mark and I were talking on the elevator um, uh, right afterwards, and I would, I would ask uh, if you subscribe to this, where it is nice to get that no and be able to move on on both parties, right? Yeah. yeah. But uh, one thing we didn't talk about is this, the premise of the TOMATO principle, the acronym, but the first of it is top of mind marketing, right? Yeah. So I think that was in, in your segment about um, – Post selling, right? right? But um, if they do say budget into timing, and, and you get a sense this could be something, right? It's like the old David Letterman bit with uh, Paul Schaefer. Yeah. Is this something or not, right? If it's something, and both parties see possibilities, uh, is it not reasonable, like the, for the newsletter list or whatever? Top of mind marketing, where at least they hear your brand. I mean, yeah. so we took us from July through December to get connected, right? Yeah. If yeah. and not that we're doing a transaction, but in terms of a relationship, if we just kind of written it off, but. Staying in touch, top of mind, so that at least they see your name. Even if they don't open the email, it's like, oh, Sandler or whatever, right? Yeah, and yeah. when the timing's right. It's continued right. touch basis throughout the process because you just never know when people are at the right point to, to, to close a deal. Right. I mean, some right. deals are going to take longer. Uh, some yep. transactions take longer. It is a relationship uh, right. process. There are some deals where you're going to close first meeting. Right, yeah. 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 But the, the key to it is continuing that communication and that dialogue and that commitment, meaning that, hey, we're committed to touch base on such and such date. Right. It's to keep that conversation going. Yeah. But it, it really speaks to the to the, one of the last points you talked about in the traditional, yeah. and I really respect what you talked about, is that you're not in the chasing I'm business. I'm not in the chasing business. No. Right? Ex- yeah. Expound on that. For- well, you know, in the traditional sales, what happens is you go through the process, you think you got to close, you go back to the office, the boss goes, hey, did you close that deal? I sure did. Well, you got the check? Well, <laughs> <laughs> no, they're gonna they're gonna they're thinking it over, Next but I'm pretty week, sure. Yeah, yeah I'm pretty meet. sure they're gonna do it. Yeah. They gave me all kind of buying signals. Yeah. They touch their wallet, everything. Well, until you get a check, you don't have a deal. 
So the prospect is going into hiding, and I'm sure a lot of people have experienced this, where now you're chasing the prospect, calling them, calling them, calling them. We call it radio silent. Yeah, yeah, yeah radio <laughs> silence, or they go dark, or you know, voicemail, uh, voicemail uh, the hell, I guess you could say. Right, yeah. right, right. So the, the whole process is, you know, chase the no. Make it okay for the prospect to say no. Yeah. And some prospects, you'll be talking to them, and they'll say, well, it's not a no. No, it's not a no. If you go to the prospect, well, is this yeah. a no? Are yeah. we done? They'll go, no, no, no. They'll keep the process going. Oh, yeah. But you'll know when it's a no. And yeah. you'll know when it's no because they're going to tell you no. Yeah. And, and you didn't get the check. <laughs> and you didn't get the check. If you're chasing your prospect, it's a no. In most cases, if you're chasing and they're hiding, it's a no. Right, yeah. Um, okay, and we may or may not have time for this. I don't know how quickly you can roll through this, but this premise of uh, behavior, attitude, and technique. Yeah, everything that I teach is behavior and attitude and techniques. What I do is I teach behaviors that help companies, small, medium-sized organizations, improve outcomes. And I do that through uh, changing bad habits into good habits to help companies make more money. You know, you got to have the right behaviors. If you don't have the right behaviors, if you don't know what those behaviors are, then how are you going to have the right behaviors? You know, selling is conceptual and technical. Technical part is people, you know, they, they, they want to do it, but they don't know how to do it. We can teach those behaviors. Attitudes, and that, that's where you go to conceptual sales. They, they know how to do it. They just don't want to do it. And you got to work on that attitude. And, and one of the most fascinating things during the um, conversation or, or your program over there, which was what uh, – the buyer sellers dance. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like the title of that. Yeah, right. Yeah. Was this uh, cold calling? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. People were just astounded how many calls you've made in the past and what you yeah. what you're currently doing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, throw those numbers out there. Uh, I, mean. I for a while there I was doing 400 and it is dials 400 dials uh, a week. That's insane. Yeah, and uh, it spanned over five days. So if I, I slacked on one day, I can pick it up <laughs> right, on day yeah. five. But my goal was. 400 and I did that for my own personal discipline because yeah. when if I got my 400 goal in for the week you know it was a personal satisfaction but I talked to a lot of people if right. you do the numbers let's say you want to close four deals a week in some cases if you do the numbers based on your business model how much your product and services cost the timelines get them to market you got to do a lot of dials if that's a big part of your selling process but what I mentioned is it should be just part of it there should be a multi-pronged yeah. approach cold calling email campaigns which we talked a lot about that yeah. networking uh, referrals it's it's a multi-pronged approach so if yeah. cold calling is your thing that you're doing right now and most business owners in there early on they do a lot of cold calls and um, it reminds me of it was either EJ Rohn or, or Zig Ziglar used to say as something effectively he was coaching an insurance um, team he brought in as a hundred salespeople there he said here's your here's your a sales pitch when you yeah. go out door knock. They were literally, you know, back in the day, knocking on people's doors selling yeah. insurance, right? And um, he said, okay, you guys ready to write this one down? You're going to ask, um, you're going to knock on the door. When they open the door, you're going to say, you don't want to buy any insurance today, do you? <laughs> right? That was the that's, entire pitch, right? It's a classic reverse. Right? And the yeah. guys are like, uh, "That's I hired this guy. I paid you all this money. That's your entire pitch? Yeah. And he sent his crew out there. And um, sure enough, they'd be knocking on those doors, and that was it. Open the door. You don't want to buy any insurance today, do you? Right? And if they did that enough, back to the numbers of the cold calling, yep. those guys were closing deals. Yeah, everything is right? about getting we, a conversation. We overcomplicate yeah, it. It's all about getting a conversation. One of the tactics <laughs> I'll use in cold calling is somebody will ask, "What's this about?" I go, "It's a cold call. Do you want to hang out?" <laughs> <laughs> you should have shared that one. Now we got it on tape, yeah, whatever, yeah. yeah, or on digital, whatever we're calling this. Yeah, that's I've never a great had, one. I've never had anyone hang up on. That's I say an that. awesome one. Yeah. Say that again. Uh, somebody, will, you'll call. They'll <laughs> right. go, "What's this about?" I go, "It's a cold call. Do you want to hang up?" <laughs> and by the way, I had somebody cold call me I love that and one. do that with me, and I laughed and I didn't hang up. I right, had a yeah. conversation. Yeah. yeah. I mean, um, you can't be a robo yeah. calling, you know, robot, right? Yeah. You, and when that, yeah. people, at the end of the day, all the technology, people still relate one person on one person. Yeah. Well, you don't have to like prospecting. You just have to do it. Yeah. All right. And on that note, guys, uh, one more time, how would folks uh, find, connect with you? Look up Sandler Training in Buckhead. You'll find me all over the place. Uh, EugenePope.Sandler.com is my website. Eugene.Pope at Sandler.com is my email. To learn about Club Corp, you can just do www.clubcorp.com. Uh, my direct email is mark.riley at clubcorp.com, and we also have a Club Corp in-club video on Facebook. Nice. And we'll post all this on the show notes, guys. It was our pleasure having you here in the, our Buckhead studio. Rich Casanova once again for the uh, Pro Business Channel on this episode of Georgia Business Radio. Thank you again for joining Rich Casanova and our guests on the Pro Business Channel. 
Use the social media links here to share today's show and stay tuned for the next episode of Georgia Business Radio.